he, I think he's the first poet to write in a world that kind of takes for granted film and radio mm -hmm. and comic books and the comic pages and newspaper. He takes for, you know, he, he takes tabloids for granted. He collages poems out of newspaper headlines, things that you might, that, that you might, stories that you might hear on the radio. And, and his voice, and um, you've attuned me to his voice, his voice has that sort of nervous, jaunty, Ironic. <laughs> Ironic. When, you know, when he, be, he begins to publish before there are talkies. Yeah. But when they start talking in the movies, they talk they like take, Kenneth they, they talk like this, yeah. Because, <laughs> so I wonder if we could look together at a yeah. poem. Yeah, and I, you suggested St. Agnes Eve, yeah, Saint, and Saint Agnes I now Eve. love it. Yeah, St. Agnes Eve is, a, is a, 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 a terrific poem. It was, the, it was the first poem in his book Angel Arms from, you know, 1929. Mm -hmm. This is a poem written out of already used. Yeah. <laughs> the world now sounds yeah. like the comics. That's right. You know, it's probably set in New York. Oh, it's, it feels like Chicago. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's the, it's, it's the world of fearing Chicago. And isn't, after doesn't it's been Chicago, put in, in the, you know, in, in the early movies, Chicago becomes right. the iconic yeah, right. city. Certainly but, but, the but, iconic but it's the world of, of, of Sandberg, Chicago after after a lot of movies have been have been made about mm -hmm. it, and I mean, prohibition changes. Yeah, right. It gets more dangerous. Yeah. But I, but I think what's so fascinating about the poem is that um, it was it was written in 1926. Fearing couldn't have heard uh, a movie, you mm -hmm. know, in which rat a tat tat there were guns firing. But but you know he he had seen movies where, where where people fade in and fade out, and he had of course seen plays where they're dramatis personae. So he frames that around the around the the poem. But but I, I think he got all those sounds from the you know from the daily comics mm -hmm. from you know from the from mm -hmm. the funny pages. And but, that we live the poem lives in a sort of meld of conventions. That's right. Right, the conventions of the move of the, some conventions of the movies at a certain stage yeah, of development, right. the conventions of the comics that yeah. are really fully realized, uh, and and poetic conventions. Well, yeah, and that's the most amazing thing about it in some ways, because I mean, it's, you know, it's the first poem in, in the book. It's, its title is meant to send you back to Keats. You yeah, know, you know, Eve of and, Saint Agnes. Yeah, and and <laughs> so so it, it's kind of the American Eve of Saint Saint Agnes in the movies, but instead of these kind of Spencerian kind of erotics that you get in Keats, what you you know what you get is a pulp is a pulp story, and I well, think well, and a, the erotics of action, right? That's this right. Is, you know that that Americans love. That's right. Action and, and, and you I roll think, away from your wife and you that's know, right. the, the city is too exciting. And you know, listening to the stammering syllables of instant death met on secret floors in the big vacant galleries of night. I mean, it, it's impossible, I think, not to hear it Eliot like in that. Sounds like noir. Yes. Well, well, it's, it's, but it's Eliot, you know. And, and then, huh. you know, and but then. Can we read it again? Let me see. Got it. Listening to the stammering syllables of instant death met, met on, on the secret right. floors in the I big I should have been a galleries. pair of ragged claws. Yeah. yeah. You know, and even then down below, you know, soft music, violins moan like weeds swaying mm -hmm. far into water, the vibrant throats of steamships hoot a sad defiance at distance and nothing. And then the very aliotic line, space curls its arm across the flat roofs and dreary streets. Well, I mean, it's a little bit Sandberg. Yeah, and that's why I kind of think of Fearing sometimes as kind of this anti-Sandberg in some ways. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's taking the kind of realistic novel that, that Sandberg absorbed into his poetry, and then then running it through the the new media of comics and, and mm -hmm. movies and radio programs, because in fact he would have heard radio programs in which guns were fired, mm -hmm. you know, in the you mm -hmm. know in, in the 1920s. Mm -hmm. So this, so along with the comics, you know, there's there's the you know there's radio serials or. Mm. You know, are behind this poem as well, but mm -hmm. and but it's I, exaggerated yeah. and magnified mm -hmm. and stylized. That's right, and and, and I don't think there's. I a love poet. the style. I love how how the sound. It just sounds canned. Yeah, in a good way. Right, because because I think that he's like, you know, he's the he's this master of of all the different voices that he's tuning into. You mm -hmm. know, whether those are poetic voices, fictional voices, pulp voices you know, radio voices, movie voices, and comics voices. You've answered in teaching me about Fearing, whom I, I didn't know much about at all before, uh, before coming here. You also open up another Midwestern poet uh, for me, Hart Crane, uh, that 
beautiful middle section of the bridge, yeah. which is about going into the Middle West where one, you pass yeah. these billboards and it, it is as though Crane turns the radio on, tries to get that American yeah. sound, but he has other business actually to conduct in his poetry yeah. than this. Um, well, because fearing I think, writes, yeah, writes you could, because I think you know fearing, fearing is one of the the great disappearing acts in mm -hmm. American poetry. I mean, like you you really don't find out. You, know, you you can read all of Fearing's poems and not know very much about his about his life. I mean, he kind of disappears into this, this swarm of voices that's around uh, Well, know, he writes novels him. and write, yeah. does he write for the movies or he writes novels that become... He, he, writes, he, he, wrote, no, he, he wrote The Big Clock that was, you know, that was, that, that was filmed twice. But, um, but, but, he, but, he, but he once told a friend that, that even in his novels, he would, he would only make himself um, a minor character in the, in the novels to, to resist the temptation to write autobiographical fiction mm -hmm. you know and, and so so the the, the the novels are all multiple voice novels mm -hmm. I mean um, each chapter is spoken by a different person and the, you know that's a very different modernist posture yeah. <laughs> that I'm a minor character right. rather than a heroic maker the heroic major um, character yeah and and that goes to a different um, a, a different piece of the sort of great yeah. modernist jigsaw where we live in a very big world yeah. that dwarfs us. Um, and as you say, Fearing is one of those who teaches us that we, we thought we lived in a landscape, we, we, we live yeah. in a set of systems. Right. It, it occurred to me as I was um, reading, him, reading him this morning that while it may be facile to call him a depression era poet, you know, yeah. the depression poet, that was the moment when Americans realized they lived inside of systems, yeah, <laughs> right? And, that's right? And that makes fearing the perfect poet, yeah. right? It, it, I mean, the, 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 what's terrible in a way, what's, what's existentially yeah. terrible as well as being hungry and not knowing you know, whether right. you keep your house, is thinking that you don't have control yeah. of your life that banks yeah. do. That, and, and, and that he would begin to really illustrate yeah, no, that it's, world. You know, yes. it's the prosody of runaway capitalism. Yes. You know, um, and you he, know, it's a machine that just gets turned on and and has a you know ha, and kind of has a will of its own and and um, it doesn't matter who but gets he's not, destroyed. But he's in front not of. Um, hysterical. No, about not, it. At all. no he, not at all. No, <laughs> he's yeah. right. Uh, no, no, he, he's he, right in there. He's fascinated by it. He's not um, sentimental. He's not hysterical. He he writes poems. Um, that are so contemporary, um, that so go to, I mean, this, we still live in this world. That's right. We live in this world of systems. We are always experiencing a kind of low-grade and sometimes high-grade anxiety.